Hello, welcome back. Today we'll start with a new module on Wittgenstein. Ludwig Wittgenstein. He's a German philosopher who was born in 1889 in Vienna. And he's one of the most influential philosophers of 20th century. And he was born in a rich family and he was the youngest of the eight children. And from 1906 to 1908, he studied mechanical engineering. And later on, in 1908, he was a student of, from 1908 onwards, he was a student of University of Manchester, where he was studying mechanical engineering and specifically, he was doing research in the design of propellers of aircraft. The, v, the propeller is the fan-like thing which is in the front side of the aircraft engine. So he is deciding that. And that required some deeper understanding of mathematics. And he was interested in the deeper aspects of mathematics. And later on he was led to the philosophical aspects of mathematics, the realm in which philosophy meets mathematics or mathematics meets philosophy. And he contacted Russell for clearing his doubt. And Russell referred him to Frege, the German philosopher which he has studied on already, which we have already studied. And later on, in 1912, he left that field and came to Cambridge and he declared, if I am intelligent, then I will continue with philosophy and if I am stupid, then I will go back to engineering. And at Cambridge, he worked under Moore from 1912 onwards. And during that period, from 1914 to 1918, during the First World War, he went back and he was part of Austrian-Hungarian army. And he fought actively in the First World War. And in a war, there will be trenches. Trenches are the pits, deep pits, which can be of I shape or L shape or P shape, which is more than six feet height or six feet depth. And people can hide inside that trench during bomb attacks so that uh, some splinters are not coming and eating them. They can escape by sitting in that pit. So that's known as trenches. And from the trenches during the first world war, world war period, he wrote the one and the only one book which is published during his lifetime, that is Tractatus Logico Philosophicus. And this is that book. Tractatus Logico Philosophicus. There are two versions which I'll introduce later on. So it was published in 1921 and in English in 1922. And the practice was aimed at finding solution to philosophical problems. He declared that after writing completion of the book, he declared that now there are no more philosophical problems. Everything has been solved. So he left Cambridge and went back to Germany. And from 1926 onwards, he started, or from 1920 to 26, he worked as a teacher in a primary school. And later on in 1926, he worked as a gardener in a monastery. And from 26 to 28, he built a house for his sister. And each and every part of the house was built by he himself that it's windows, doors, everything was done by Wittgenstein himself alone. And 
It was during that period that the movement called Logical Positives took place. And the book Practitus, which has written, which was published during his lifetime, the Practitus, was a Bible for the Logical Positives. They took insight from Practitus and applied it in developing the Logical Positives theory. But later on, Wittgenstein declared that the Logical Positives actually misunderstood Practitus. And 1929, Wittgenstein was asked by Russell to come back to Cambridge. He came back to Cambridge. And the philosophy which Wittgenstein has done from 1912 to 1921-22 till the publication of Tractatus can be viewed as his early philosophy. When we speak about Wittgenstein, there are two Wittgensteins. They are not two separate persons, but a single person having two approaches to philosophy. The Wittgenstein Wittgenstein approach from 1912 to 22 is known as early philosophy of Wittgenstein. After his returning to Cambridge in 1929, he started looking into philosophy in a different way, which is known as the letter philosophy of Wittgenstein or letter Wittgenstein. The early Wittgenstein contribute towards the ideal language philosophy, whereas the later Wittgenstein contributed towards the ordinary language philosophy. And in 1939, he became a professor at Cambridge. And 1951, he died of post-trait cancer in Cambridge itself. And this is just the life history of Wittgenstein, not an intellectual history. And his major publications, his major works are the first one, we can divide his works into two groups, that which belongs to early philosophy or that which belongs to early Wittgenstein and that which belongs to later Wittgenstein. And in early philosophy, there are ma three major sources. One is what he has written in 1914. That is the notes dedicated to G. E. Moore is one source of early Wittgenstein. And another source is what he has, his notebooks which he has done from 1914 to 60, which is published as notebooks. The other and the most important work, work in early philosophy is Tractatus Logico Philosophicus. And there are two versions of this book. Two translations. This is the translation by Ogden. Ogden's translation, which is published in English in 1922. And this is Pierre's translation. So, two translations. There are mi minor differences in translation. When it is translated from German to English, there are minor differences in translation. But the idea remains the same. And this book I will be introducing in the next class as an introduction to Tractatus or the early philosophy of Wittgenstein. And even though this is a book, which is almost the originally, which is having only 20, 75 pages, there are thousands of books written on this, having crystallized concepts. There are thousands of interpretations. Or there are articles based on an, only a single sentence of this book. So that's the importance of this book in the history of philosophy. And as far as the later philosophy of Wittgenstein is concerned, there are many writings available, but all of them were published after his death. The only book which was published on during his lifetime is Tractatus. Coming to his later philosophy, the most important work of Wittgenstein is the philosophical investigation. This is one of the most important works in later philosophy and this is published in 1953. 1951 he died and 1953 this book was published. And another book 
is culture and value by Bill Gates. This is not strictly fitting to uh, the philosophy of language. <coughs> and, and the book is the lectures on the foundations of mathematics. What he has done, the lectures he has done in Cambridge. Lectures on the foundations of mathematics. So, it is a genius in philosophy. It is not limited to philosophy of language or analytic tradition. The roots of continental philosophy can be traced back to Wittgenstein. That is the later philosophy of Wittgenstein. And also, there are references to religion, to mysticism, to culture, to aesthetics, to philosophy of might. All these areas are covered or all these aspects are covered in Wittgenstein's work. And that is the importance of his genius. Now, other books which are part of letter philosophy is the Blue Book and Brown Book. These are the notes that are taken by Wittgenstein students. And the Blue Book is the Blue Book and Brown Book. It is the color of the notebook. And another important book is ZL. Z-D-T-E-L. -T ZL is another major work in letter philosophy. And still another work is On Certainty. On Certainty belongs to the letter against him. So these are the major works. And if you compare the early philosophy and letter philosophy of against him, there are marked differences. The early philosophy, as I told earlier, is trying to formulate an ideal language. It belongs to the ideal language philosophy. So everything is clear there. Everything is precise there. There is no ambiguity. There is a clear logic. Whereas the later philosophy of con is considered, it belongs to the ordinary language philosophy. How language is used in the everyday life with its diversity is studied in later philosophy. And as far as the later philosophy is concerned, there is no single logic. There is no single interpretation. There are much more possibilities of interpretation. The meaning is not precise and it is not rigid. It is varying from context to context, from culture to culture. The logic itself gets changed. So, the early philosophy having a rigid logic and the later philosophy having multiple logics, multiple ways of understanding. Early philosophy having a single meaning and later philosophy having a multitude of meaning, a more clear of meaning. The, there are different possibilities of meaning. And the comfort and calmness of early philosophy is not there in later philosophy. So, the two Wittgenstein, the early and the later, are drastically different. But there is something which is running alike in, the, in both these philosophies. Some sort of the quest for certainty. And with this was often caught between these two extremes. He had much intellectual conflicts. Some four of his brothers committed suicide out of some such conflicts. And with this time, was contemplating on suicide many times. And during late nights, he used to visit Russell. And Russell used to calm him down. And he was that committed to his profession, to philosophy. And the transition from the early to later, the certainty to ambiguity, the rigid to the loose, to a single logic, to many logic, is well described in one of the movies about Wittgenstein by Dirk German. There is a scene which I will play later on 
in which the economist Keynes tells a story to Wittgenstein on his deathbed. And the story is about the whole life of Wittgenstein. Wittgenstein from a early from the point of view of early philosophy, where he wanted everything in clear and precise to the later philosophy. And also about the thread which is running throughout this early to later, that is the quest for certainty, which made him insane to a certain extent, which was the cause of all his grief. And to understand Wittgenstein, to understand Wittgenstein's philosophy, there is a need to understand his life also. In one aspect, he was so saintly. And he, as I told earlier, describes not only about logic, but also about religion, mysticism. And he was a pianist also. So it's a multi talented personality. And with the clippings from the movie Wittgenstein, we'll end today's session. In the next session, I'll be describing the background of the early philosophy of Wittgenstein. That's mainly about the book, Practitus, Logic of Philosophers, a general introduction. Okay, then by we'll watch the movie now. Thank you. I'd quite like to have composed a philosophical work which consisted entirely of jokes. Why didn't you? Sadly, I didn't have a sense of humor. Let me tell you a little story. There was once a young man who dreamed of reducing the world to pure logic. Because he was a very clever young man, he actually managed to do it. When he had finished his work, he stood back and admired it. It was beautiful world purged of imperfection and indeterminacy, countless acres of gleaming ice stretching to the horizon. So the clever young man looked around the world he had created and decided to explore it. He took one step forward and fell flat on his back. You see, he'd forgotten about friction. The ice was smooth and level and stainless, but you couldn't walk there. So the clever young man sat down and wept bitter tears. But as he grew into a wise old man, he came to understand that roughness and ambiguity aren't imperfections. They're what make the world turn. He wanted to run and dance. And the words and things scattered upon the ground were all battered and tarnished and ambiguous. The wise old man saw that that was the way things were. But something in him was still homesick for the ice where everything was radiant and absolute and relentless. Though he had come to like the idea of the rough ground, he couldn't bring himself to live there. So now he was marooned between earth and ice, at home in neither. And this was the cause of all his grief. Hey all, chromodynamics, Lord of Quantum. This is Quark, Chan, and Strangers reporting. Concerning the philosopher Ludwig Wittgenstein, deceased. The solution to the riddle of life in space and time lies outside space and time. But as you know, and I know, there are no riddles. If a question can be put at all, it can also be answered.